The purpose of this video is to familiarize the user with the basic 3D rendering controls. This video was recorded using CubeView version 2809. Most of the features that are described in this video are also found in earlier versions of CubeView as well. Most of the controls that are found for the 3D rendering are over here in the Tools and Setting panel to the left. There are also some additional controls in the top toolbar. For example, to activate the cut plane or to rotate the 3D data set restricting motion to one plane. And also under the views, there are several different render types which will change the appearance of the 3D rendering. You may also notice in the 3D rendering that there's what appears to be a disc shape underneath the patient's foot. This is the wooden platform that the patient is standing on. You can load the data set or reload the data set, making an adjustment under settings and pre-processing, skipping the lower volume at load. If you take off a couple of millimeters, anywhere between five and 10 millimeters for your center scans, that's also your medium scans, or your offset scans, those are your large scans, Experiment with the numbers a bit and you should be able to reload the data set with the patient platform missing. In this particular case, I went to pre-processing, took off about 11 millimeters from the lower volume at load, and I was able to remove the patient platform from the 3D rendering as well as from the sagittal and coronal and axial views as well. Other than rotating the 3D rendering, the tools that are used the most frequently are the render scaling controls over here on the left hand pane. The gain control, when you adjust the slider or press the minus or plus buttons, will adjust the lighting effect and the colorizing effect of whatever appears in the 3D rendering window. The offset control, which is probably used more frequently, will enable you to remove the soft tissue and show just the hard tissue based on adjustments of the sliding scale or using the minus or plus buttons. When we make adjustments to the offset scale, what we're doing is a process that is known as thresholding. We're establishing a threshold, which we can then adjust, and we're saying, show me everything that is more dense than the density scale at this point and remove everything that is less dense. So by adjusting the slider, we can remove softer tissue, in this case skin, subcutaneous fat, and as we continue to adjust the sliding scale, we are presented with the more dense material. When we adjust in the opposite direction, we are adjusting the threshold at which softer material appears, gradually moving that point lower and lower and lower until finally all of the soft tissue appears. We can also use the buttons on either end of the sliding control. We can click on the plus button over here, the smaller one of the two, and make minor adjustments. Or we can make larger adjustments by clicking on the larger of the two buttons. And when we go back to the other end, we can make major adjustments again by clicking on the double minus or by clicking on the smaller button, we can make minor adjustments as well. This serves the same function as a sliding bar, giving you a slightly different feel or level of control. One thing to note about the sliding controls, when you drag it and move it and then let go, it springs back to its original position. So you may have to make some minor adjustments several times, letting go and then maybe clicking again, grabbing it and moving it and again letting go until you've reached the desired level of density scaling. Just a reminder, like any of the other three NPR views, you can always double click on the image in the 3D rendering window and you can make it go full screen and you can also zoom in or out to better work with the 3D rendering. Let's take a look at the gain control now. The primary purpose of the gain control, whether you're using the slider or the buttons, is to adjust the lighting effect and the colorizing effect. As I slowly bring the slider to the right, notice that the bones in the 3D rendering appear to be developing a darker red color. And the lighting effect is also slightly different as well. 
I can go in the opposite direction and make the bones also appear whiter. Another control I have available to me under 3D controls is a 3D data set filter. By default, it's set on normal, and that's probably the best place to keep it. But depending on if you have a clean scan or not, you might want to experiment with either smooth or sharp filters. Clicking on the smooth filter, we see it kind of smooths out any detail, but it also reduces noise in places like between the toes or if we had two feet between the two feet. This again is normal, the default appearance. And then if we go to sharp, we can make out considerably more detail, but we'll also see more noise, such as between the toes and also what you would see between two feet as well. So the recommendation, unless you're looking for detail on the surface of the bone, is to keep it on the normal filter. Let's take a look at a different patient now. Sometimes you may open up a data set and you may not be able to see anything in the 3D rendering window. Let's take a look at that example. In this new case I've just opened, we're looking in the upper left window, looking for that 3D rendering, and we basically don't see anything. And that's because whenever we scan a patient when there's metal present, in this case we have got some metal staples, and we've also got a couple of metal screws in the calcaneus, which we can barely make out the staples here. Having the presence of metal throws off the 3D rendering scaling a bit, so we have to make some adjustments to it. So whenever you do see essentially a blank window in the upper left corner where the 3D rendering should be, the first thing you should consider is that there's probably metal in the scan somewhere and it's throwing off the rendering. One of the ways we can make adjustments is to go to the offset slider and make several passes or hit the double button until the anatomy starts to appear. That's one way to bring the image back into view. Now hitting reset will take us back to the original view that we had. Hitting the metal button may overcompensate and then you would have to remove some of the data by sliding to the right and removing some of the softer tissue or noise. Resetting this again, a third option is to hit the auto button. And this typically seems to work the best, kind of places us right in the middle of showing the bones with very little soft tissue on it and only some minor adjustment is required. You may also have to go to the gain slider to make it look more like the image that you're used to, sliding it to the left, removing some of the red, making the bones more whitish in appearance. Using a different data set, let's take a look at the cut plane tools. The cut plane tools will allow us to isolate part of the patient data set that we see here. For example, to just look at the left foot or the right foot by essentially sliding a large flat plane between the two, which we can also change the direction of it, and removing part of that from the 3D rendering. On the left hand pane, down towards the bottom, it says manage cut planes. Clicking on the show button, we then see the cut plane tools that are available to us. Just going to double click and bring this image full screen. In the top ribbon, we see the cut planes button. Pressing on that, we see immediately it looks like part of the data set has been removed. I'm just going to zoom out a bit, press that cut planes button again, and by rotating it, this cube or cubic shape represents the patient data set, and we can see a plane outline by this green line that is passing through the middle of it front to back. Whatever is in front of that plane has been removed from view and whatever is behind that plane is visible. By default, when we click on the cut planes button and activate the cut planes, it appears as though the front half of the data set, meaning the metatarsals and the toes in this case, have disappeared from view. We can control the orientation of the cut plane by using these buttons that say top, bottom, left, right, front, and back. When we click on the top button, we see that the top part of the data set has been cut away. When we click on the bottom button, we now see the bottom part of the data set is missing. When we click on the left button, we see that the left side of the data set is missing, so we're now looking at the patient's right foot. When we click on the right button, the opposite occurs. We can now see the patient's left foot 
because the right side of the data set has been removed from view. Clicking on the front, this is our default view. And clicking on the back is the opposite of that. We are cutting away the back part of the data set. So for now, let's click on the left foot so we can isolate one foot and remove the other from view. If at any time we want to revert back to the full data set, bring it all back into view, we can click on Hide Cut Planes. And in this case, the green outline of the cut plane is no longer visible, and both feet are. And clicking Show Cut Planes again restores the cut plane and removes from view the part of the data set that has been selected. We can also remove the cut plane in its entirety and then we're back to our full data set again as you see here. We can also use multiple cut planes to further isolate a region of interest. I'm going to activate my cut planes here. Then I'm going to switch again to isolate a single foot. Notice that my active cut plane is outlined in green. When I add a second cut plane my first cut plane is now outlined in blue. That means that it is inactive and any work I do will be now restricted to the green cut plane. The green cut plane is always the active cut plane. I can move the cut planes by pressing and holding down the shift key on my keyboard and also pressing and holding down my left mouse button and then dragging my mouse up and down. So the combination of shift key on the keyboard and left mouse button up and down is what will move the cut planes. I can also switch to the other cut plane by going over to the cut plane management window and now I am shifting my cut plane from left to right. I have shifted to or moved control to the other cut plane. I can also change the angle of orientation of the cut plane by pressing and holding the control key. When I hold the control key down and left click with my mouse, notice how the active or green cut plane is now changing angle. Once I do that, I'm going to let go of control, go to shift, and now I am cutting at an oblique angle as opposed to my original right angle. Again, shift, left click and drag moves your cut plane or shifts your cut plane Control, left click and drag will change the angle of orientation of the cut plane. We can also control the cut planes by the slab lines, the blue, red and green lines. I am going to make this red slab line thicker as you see here and then I'm going to cut from the red slab in this second set of controls under Manage Cut Planes. In doing so I now get a 3D rendering that is the same thickness and width of the red slab lines. Furthermore, if I move the slab lines by checking the synchronize box, I can also have the 3D rendering adjust its cuts at the same time. Notice we have plane one and plane two. We actually have an upper and a lower cut plane and we are showing you everything that is between the two edges. We can also further isolate the anatomy by making a second cut from slabs as well. In this case I've just made the green slabs thicker so that we're going to be looking at the patient's right foot and then I'm going to select show me red and green together. So now we have a significantly smaller volume in the 3D rendering window than we did before. Isolating just one foot and then isolating part of just one foot using cuts from slabs. This concludes the basic controls for the 3D rendering window. There will be an additional video created for advanced controls for the 3D rendering window as well. This video was recorded on CubeView version 2809. If you would like to upgrade to this version or whatever the current version of CubeView is, please be sure to contact CurveBeam Technical Support to arrange an appointment to have your system updated.